Hello there guys, welcome back to another epic in Extra Rule Maths video. In this video we want the Laplace transform of sine omega t and cos omega t. Now of course these are very important functions, especially in differential equations. They come up very frequently, as you already know, in differential equations uh, because they tend to be the solutions of differential equations very frequently. And also they're just very simple fundamental functions. So it's quite nice to um, know what the Laplace transforms of them are. And as we'll see in future videos, you can you really want to know what these are because you can use the Laplace transform to do particular integrals uh, that involve sine and cosine. So it's very useful. Okay, why are we doing them in the same video though? Well, you might as well. They're both they're both trigonometric functions. They're they're quite closely related. So let's just do them in the same video. But actually, the way that you work out sine omega t and cos omega t's Laplace transform. Um, is by finding them at the same time, doing them together. So let me show you exactly what I mean. So let's begin. Let's consider, guys, let's consider for just one moment the Laplace transform of something a bit different to sine and cos. What about the Laplace transform of um, cos omega t plus i sine omega t? What about that? Well, of course, um, this can be written as e to the i omega t by Euler's formula. And the reason why we're, we're doing this, because this is not the Laplace transform of cos omega t or sine omega t, right? It's cos omega t plus i sine omega t. The reason why we're doing this is because the Laplace transform is a linear operator, which means you can do two things. One, the Laplace transform of a sum is the sum of the Laplace transforms. So the Laplace transform of this term plus this term is the Laplace transform of this term plus the Laplace transform of this one. So we can individually take Laplace transforms of each term if we're taking it of a sum. Additionally, you can factor constants outside of the Laplace transform. So for example, the Laplace transform of 2t is the same as 2 times the Laplace transform of t. For example, something like that. We haven't actually learned how to do polynomials yet, but we'll do that. But, so what I'm getting at though is the Laplace transform, for example, of i sine omega t is i times the Laplace transform of sine omega t. So I can factor the i out. So I'm going to rewrite what we've just considered here in two ways. First of all, I'm going to rewrite it using Euler's formula. So this is e to the i, normally it'd be theta, but in this case it's omega t. It's also, by linearity, equal to the Laplace transform of cos omega t, close bracket, plus i times the Laplace transform of sine omega t. So our kind of plan in this video is to find the Laplace transform of e to the i omega t and the real component of that will be the Laplace transform of cos omega t, whilst the imaginary component of this Laplace transform will be the Laplace transform of sine omega t. Because the Laplace transform of this is obviously equal to the Laplace transform of this, but this is split into a real and imaginary component. If that makes sense, but we're going to actually do it, so you'll see what I'm saying. Okay, now fortunately, we already know, if you saw the previous video, link in description, we already know how to take the Laplace transform of functions that are of the form e to the a t. So, for example, if we take uh, the Laplace transform of e to the a t, we worked out in the last video that this is 1 over s minus a. That was from the previous video. So that means that the Laplace transform, by the same logic of e to the i omega t, we can see here that a and i omega are, you know, filling the same role. We end up with 1 over s minus i omega, like so. Okay, now as long as, because remember, the Laplace transform of e to the i omega t is the same as the Laplace transform of cos omega t plus i times the Laplace transform of sine omega t. So if we can split this fraction, 1 over s minus i omega, if we can split this, 
into a real and imaginary component. The real component will be the Laplace transform of cos omega t, whilst the imaginary will be that of sine omega t. So I want to basically realize the denominator for this fraction, and I want to be able to write this in the form basically a plus b i, uh, because then I can easily compare the real and imaginary components. So let me do that up here. So I'm going to take one over s minus i omega, and I want to write this in the form a plus b i, where a and b are real. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by the complex conjugate. So s plus i omega divided by s minus i omega. Oh, sorry, it should actually, yeah, yeah, so, uh, s plus i omega divided by s plus i omega. This is, of course, the number one. Um, but what it's going to let us do is take the numerator, write it as just s plus i omega. But the denominator, this is actually the difference of two squares. If we multiply that out, we'll end up with s squared plus omega squared. If you were to use FOIL and expand that out, you would do that. You notice it's the difference of two squares, um, but with a complex number, with an i um, in there, which gives you that plus, so it's actually like the sum of two squares. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, now this, just to be very clear, uh, what we're saying here is that the Laplace transform of e to the i omega t, which remember is also the Laplace transform of cos t plus i times the Laplace transform of sine t, or um, actually it's cos omega t, uh, sorry, cos omega t plus uh, the, i times the Laplace transform of sine omega t, like this. Uh, these are the same, obviously, but we've also now worked out that it's equal to this. So this is also equal to and I'm going to split this up and I'm going to write it in the form uh, a plus bi. So I'm going to write this as s over s squared plus omega squared plus i times omega over s squared plus omega squared, like that. So this is just this, but splitting it into the two fractions. And again, I've done this because now I can very clearly see, and I, I might even do it in a very bad red pen, that this is equal to this. And I unfortunately don't have another colour, guys. My apologies. So I'm going to do it in black. This is equal uh, to this. And the actual, I've circled the eyes, but you don't actually need to circle the eyes. So essentially what I'm getting at is that the Laplace transform of cos of omega t is just s over s squared plus omega squared, whilst the Laplace transform of sine omega t is just omega over s squared plus omega squared. This is the result there. That's an awful, I've just done a very, very bad box around that, but <laughs> something like that. These are our results here, guys. Those are our Laplace transforms. That's how you take the Laplace transforms. You do a quick, cheeky little dive into the complex realm, and you come out um, with these two amazing results. Thank you guys so much for watching. I highly appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.